Hey everybody, Tom Cherry Holmes here with another video in the Retro Computing Archaeology series. In this video, we show the process of composing a piece of music on an Atari 8 bit computer using the AMS or Advanced Music System software. AMS, as it was called, was written by Lee Actor and was distributed by the Atari Program Exchange. He did two versions of the software, uh, with the second version essentially being a massive bug fix of the first one, and uh, the format itself became a mainstay of computer bulletin board systems because it became a very convenient way to distribute uh, songs, and it was really easy to use, especially at the time. Uh, however, there haven't been any videos showing how AMS actually works in the process of composing a piece of music. So that's, what's, that's essentially what this video is trying to address. To do this, we are actually going to set up and use AMS to transcribe a piece of music. In this case, we're actually going to be transcribing a copy of Johann Sebastian Bach's invention in D minor. Pardon me here. <laughs> And you'll be able to follow along as I take and transcribe each piece. At least in an abridged form, I won't do every single measure, but you will see the process of me entering in notes and how it corresponds to the score. But first we need to take and set up our drive slots. To start, we need to get a copy of AMS and we will load it directly off of atariapps.errata.online in the music folder, Advanced Music System 2, mounted as read-only in drive one, and then I have, because I've done this a few times already today, I have an AMS work disk that I've done using the new command here, which I will mount in drive two, and mount it read-write. With this, we'll tap the option key and boot into AMS. And now we will actually be inside of the advanced music system software. The way the menu system works, we simply just select the option for the particular function of the program we wish to use, such as pressing A to play. Any submenus will also come up, and it tries as best as it can to explain each option. Since nothing is in memory, we need to take and write some music or load some in. Let's go ahead and start writing some. We press B to enter edit music. And to spare you guys from all the key clicking and everything else, I will actually take and mute the Atari now. And we will start with the first measure. Now, we need to set up a few things about this particular piece. By default, it gives us a time signature of 4-4, which is sufficient for most pop music. However, since this is, um, <clears throat> since this is 19th century classical music, uh, you know, late 18th, early 19th century classical music, uh, it's more in tune with 3-8 time signature. So we need to adjust that. And we do that using the meter command. We specify a time signature of 3-8, just as it shows on the score. And since the, temp since the tempo is close enough to Allegro here, 96 beats per minute for our taste versus 100, I'm not going to change it. It's okay. We do need to change the time signature, though, the key signature, though. This will help us make it easier to enter in notes because I won't have to constantly enter in sharps and flats all the time. To do that, we'll do the key command. And you specify the key signature by how many sharps or how many flats you wish to use. In our case, we want a single, uh, we want a single flat to represent the key of D minor. And right now, our dynamics are set at uh, what's essentially middle of the road. We're going to change that as far as entering in our first note. Entering in notes is simple enough. You just enter in a note, 
such as D for example. And since you can see the default uh, duration is a quarter note and the octave is four, it went ahead and filled in the blanks for us for the entire note. It gave us a quarter note uh, at mid dynamics uh, in octave four. That's not exactly what we want, so we'll go ahead and delete that note and try again. We want to take and specify that this is a 16th note. Now, once we've done that, any successive notes that we, that we enter will automatically have the uh, defaults that we've used for anything that we specified otherwise. So since everything that we specified up to this point has been a 16th note of MF, of, of MF dynamics, it's gone ahead and filled that in for us automatically. And with that, we can use the play command, P, to hear the results. And so on. Now, we can, at this point, go ahead and use the M command for the next measure. And we will move to the next measure in our transcription. Now, of course, we want to do a C sharp. We want to make sure it starts off in octave four before. But we also want You'll notice that AMS tries to guess which octave a note needs to be in. This is especially true if you have scale mode turned on. Scale mode very helpfully helps you pick the correct octave based on previous input and is especially helpful for musical pieces like this where you have lots of runs of notes moving up or down the scale. So you'll notice as we start entering in notes, uh, the number of beats will increase uh, uh, so that you can keep track of what beat you're actually on inside the measure. If you try to enter in too many notes in a given measure, then the computer will beep at you and you will get a uh, reverse video indicator up here on the top right hand corner indicating that you are over your meter. Next measure. And now we've, uh, now we have a run of eighth notes. So, F four E, A, and D. All right. Next measure. And C sharp. And E. Next measure. D five S. And with that, we have transcribed the first line. And we can hear the results. We can go ahead and go back to the menu. And we can play what we have so far. And there is the first line. And we've decided to use the first voice for all the treble clef notes. But we also have notes down here in the bass clef as well, especially in these last three measures here that we need to account for. And we will use the second voice for those. To do that, we basically go ahead and enter edit again, except this time instead of using voice one, we use voice two. And you'll notice that now since we're dealing with voice two, we see an indicator that we're in voice two, but we're in measure number one. 
The first two measures here are basically inhabited by whole rests. That is, in this case, I have to simulate those with three eighth rests. So, R for rest, E of eighth notes. Then we do another measure. And again, and now we're in measure three where we can start uh, inputting in our run of 16th notes. So these first two measures have been put in. We're now here. And we start with this first run here. Now, you can make a point here as to whether or not how we want to start. Uh, the top bit right there is essentially um, octave number three. You could basically make the case of it being either octave two or octave three. I'll make an executive decision here and say that this will be an octave two. And next measure. Let's see. So And you can see right here, we'll go ahead and play this measure here so we can verify it. And actually, wrong octave here. We'll just edit that. Try that again, and so on. And finally, with the last measure of this particular section, we go to the next measure. Say sorry. Uh, F two E, and you'll notice as you type certain things in, AMS tries to parse as best as it can, and if you don't type it in exactly the same way, it will try to fudge things around to match as best it can. And so there we go. Boom. We'll come back. Sorry, it's been a very long day. And we can hear the results of the two parts playing together now. And so on. Now, I won't do too much more here, but I'm going to take and load something that I did earlier so you can see how I implemented certain parts of it here. So we'll load up, since I've done this a few times today, excuse me, We will look and go into enter edit music for voice number one. And we'll look at a particular piece here as to how I did, for example, the trills. And for that, we'll go here. And that is measure number 19. To do that, we use the M command like before, which typically goes forward one measure, but you can specify a measure number. 
Now you'll notice here that in lieu of the trills, I implemented them as a series of 30 second notes. And if you play them, this is what they sound like. And I appropriated that in the several places that there are trills in this particular piece. But using what I've just shown you before, I went through and transcribed this entire piece and put it inside the memory here. And this is essentially, we'll, we'll go ahead and hear the result. You quit and you will play the whole thing. Enjoy. So there we are, the completed piece. Uh, the completed piece took me approximately 45 minutes from start to finish to transcribe the whole thing. And in point of fact, I actually have done it no less than three times today uh, as practice. Um, but it's kind of a testament as to how effective this user interface is, especially once you get used to using it. The manual itself is actually very useful in this regard. Uh, the manual is actually only a handful of pages and it shows you all of the commands and what they do and it runs through uh, an example session uh, giving you a piece of music and showing how it takes and breaks it all down. Uh, and it's written extremely well and overall. I, uh, it's a very excellent piece of early pieces of software and I really wanted to try and get this documented so that people could see how this actually worked. So I um, hope you guys enjoyed it and um, until next time guys, have fun. <laughs>